Okay, so now we want to add some sounds. We want to add um, a timer and we want to add a click. So when you click the button, you will hear a metronome and you can, you're can you going to be able to hear that click and uh, adjust the tempo. But before we can play anything, we actually need a click. And what could be more fun than actually recording your own clicks? So that's what's going to happen right now. Okay, we're back. That was easy. We got two MP3 audio files now, a click one and a click two. And um, let's just import them up here and listen to what they actually sound like. Oh, we can do that here. And I'm going to put that up here with all my other constants. So I'm going to take the constant keyword and I'm going to create the click one. And the click one is going to be the click that you hear on the on the stressed beat on the accentuated beat, the first one off of the, in this case, four or five or whatever. Um, we're gonna go new audio with a capital A to make a new instance of, uh, of this here. And we are just going to pass in the URL of it and it's called click1.mp3. We're going to do the same thing almost for the next one. That's just gonna be click two instead of click one. And here we got to change that to click two. So let's try and play these two and see if it works. So I can go ahead and click one, play. And that should work. So when I save it, I should hear a click. And I hear a click. Let's try it. click two. That's another type of click. So now we have these two different clicks that we can play. And those are the clicks that we're going to be using for the metronome. We're not going to use this one quite yet. We're just going to get rid of that. But this is not enough. We're going to have to use a timer to uh, actually start this metronome because basically a metronome is just a timer that keeps time for you, right? Uh, we cannot use the built-in timer functions in JavaScript because they're simply too bad. They're simply too inaccurate for us to use. And uh, I actually made a video some time ago about how you make an accurate timer or a self-adjusting timer. And you can find that on, on this channel on YouTube. You can find it right here. It's called how to make an accurate and precise timer in JavaScript. So um, so if you go and check that out, you will learn how to do that. But if you're not interested in that, you can just continue watching and I'll explain briefly what it's all about, but I'm not going to go into any details. So here we have the code from that video and uh, you can see there are lots of um, comments. So let's just go through it. So basically this is just a constructor function where you can uh, you can make an instance of the timer. You can pass in a callback and uh, whatever happens in that callback, this callback will be run a specific amount of times with the interval of whatever you pass in here in milliseconds. This is not exactly the same as I, I changed this a little bit, but I'll explain that later. It's not exactly the same as I showed you in, in that video before. But what we do here, we just uh, we, we start the timer. We have some different uh, properties on the timer to start it and to stop it. And then we have this one. This is where all the magic happens, uh, the round here. And basically, we're just uh, measuring the drift. How much does it drift? Um, we use the date now to get a very accurate number for that. And then we uh, subtract the expected time. So whatever the drift is, we're just going to take run the timeout one more time and subtract the drift. So it's self adjusting. It's not like it's totally accurate, but it's self adjusting. And that should be accurate enough for uh, for using with the metronome. The thing that I actually changed here is, so if we make an instance of timer, and we set the time interval, and that is always set in milliseconds, if we set that to like, um, very slow, like let's say 10 seconds or something like that, then it will not run until after 10 seconds after calling the start method here. And that means if we click the start button, we have to wait 10 seconds before it actually starts. Of course, with the metronome, we want it to start immediately after you click the start button. So what I have done here, I have, um, usually I have an error call back here that will be run down here if the drift is uh, way too high. You can check that out in, in the video I am I'm going to link to in the description as well. But the new thing is that instead of only that error callback, I'm passing in an options callback. And then we're going to put that error callback on the option here. I have inside this one, you can see I have an immediate that is set to true. That means that we want it to run 
immediately. We don't want it to wait those 10 seconds or five seconds or whatever you put in. But the next round should uh, should wait whatever the time interval may be. So I'm just checking up here. If we have this immediate properties and that is set to true, we're just gonna run the callback. So now that I've explained that, let's move on. We could just take this code and just paste it in here, but I think it's getting too messy if we have a timer and um, and all the other app stuff here, because this is kind of a separate thing. So let's just export this as a module so we can have it in its separate file. And the way we can do that is we have it, it's, it's called timer, function timer. So right down here, I can just go ahead and write export default timer. And then we can import it in our app.js. So, but before we can do that, we have to go in our HTML and we have to tell this one we're going to load down here, the app.js, where is that here? We have to add that it's actually a module. So type equals module. Then we are allowed to load these, um, to import these in other JavaScript files so we can split our code up into smaller files. Um, so now that we have done that, I am just going to close this one down and all the way at the top here before our, for these, I'm going to import timer from, and that is going to be in the same folder, timer.js. And now we should have access to, uh, to this timer. Okay, I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit here and I'm gonna scroll all the way to the bottom here because this is where we're gonna start. We imported the timer up here and um, let's just make an instance of that. We're gonna call it metronome. So const metronome, and that's going to be a new timer. And we're gonna pass some stuff into this. We're gonna pass a function first and that is going to be Oh, we need an equals here like that. And that is going to be the callback that we are calling all the time. We don't have one yet, but I'm going to make one in a moment. We're going to call it play click because that's what's going to happen. And then we are going to put in the amount of milliseconds. And we don't really have that yet, but um, we have a BPM. And the BPM, if you take 60,000 and you divide it by the BPM, then you will get that value. So 60,000 divided by BPM will give us the value in milliseconds and the timer needs to take milliseconds. So uh, that's what we're gonna do here. And the next one we're gonna pass in, that's what I talked about before, uh, the change that we made. I'm not gonna put in an error function, but I am going to pass an object here and we have immediate here, if this one is set to true in this configuration object that we're passing, then it'll start immediately. If it's set to false, it will wait this amount of time before it runs the first time, before it runs the play click uh, function that we haven't yet created for the first time. I hope this makes sense. So let's create this play click function. And that is the function we want to run every, whatever this is going to be in milliseconds. Function play click, which is just going to be a normal function like this. One thing we can do here is we can actually just try to play one of the clicks. So we had a click. Let's just take click one and run the play method on that. So let's try and start it like this. And we hear a steady beat here. We hear the click one playing every I think it's 140, right? Because that's the initial value we set it to, the BPM. Let's just delete this line again and save so we don't have to listen to this. So it works, it kind of works, but we wanna, we wanna accentuate the first uh, click. We want the first click of four or five or whatever it's gonna be here. Uh, we want that to be click one. Otherwise we wanna play click number two. And the way to do that is we have to keep track of where we are if we are at, um, yeah, where are we actually located? We already have this uh, this beats per measure set to four here. Uh, let's make another one. So let, let's call it count because we're gonna count up to whatever this one 
is set to. And then we're going to, every time it's one or every time it's the first time it's running, we're going to play a different sample. So here we're going to just initialize it by setting it to zero. Let's save that. And then down here in our play click, we can, um, I can go ahead here and I can say if. So if count is equal to beats per measure, which right now is four, then I want to set it to zero. So we're just going to reset the count to zero because so then we want to start over. Okay. So that means that every time it is, if it's equal to five, four, seven, we just want to start over. So we know we're going to have to play the, the first click, uh, the first time. So the next thing we want to check for is actually if the count is zero, if it is the first time. So if count equals zero, then we want to play the click one, click one, play, right? But if it's not, we just add an else statement here. We want to click the, um, the click two. So, but right now the count will always only be zero because we don't increment it or anything. So down here after the else statement, we can go ahead and count. We can increment that by one, only one plus, two pluses. Let's try and see if it works. Start. So we're going to start the metronome and every first beat is click number one and all the others are click number two. If we go up to five, it'll be five. Change the tempo. Oh, that doesn't work. Actually, we've got to fix that in a moment. But now it's only, you know, we have to fix something here, but uh, it kind of works. But we're, let's let's have a look at what, what else we can do. I'm just going to delete this and get rid of it. Let's first of all just hook up the start button. Before we hook up the start button, I would like to um, to have in here, we would like to have a variable uh, flag actually telling us if it's running or if it's not running, the metronome. So let's create this variable and let's call it is running. And initially, it's just going to be false because it's not going to be running from the beginning. We need someone to click the start button first. So is running is false. But then let's go down here. And after all of our event listeners, let's right here, we have our start stop button. And up here, it's not being used. So we can take this one. And down here, we're going to add an event listener to that. And that is, of course, going to be a click event and function. So when we click this one, first of all, we just want to reset the count. So we know that every time we started, we're, we're going to start from zero, the one we initially set up here. So uh, if we stop it and it's on two, then when we started, we're going to reset it to zero. Uh, then we don't get any nasty surprises. So count is going to be zero. We're going to reset that. All right. And then we're going to check if it's actually already running. So if is running the one we said before, if or actually if it's not running, then we want to start it. So we're going to start the metronome here. And then of course, after we do that, we're going to set is running to true because now it is running. It's going to be true. Okay. And then of course, we want to change the text content here. We don't want uh, it to be start anymore. We want it to be stop instead. So we can take the start stop button, this one here, and we can set the text content to uh, stop. Okay. And then else what we want to do here, if it already is running, we don't want to do much. We actually want to stop it. So we can go ahead and say metronome stop like this. And then we're going to set is running to false. And then we got to take the start stop button and update the text content there as well. It's going to be, I'm going to set it back to start. OK. 
Okay, so now that should work, hopefully. Let's see if it works. I'm gonna click the Start button. It works. If I increase this, it runs in six instead of four. So that's all good, that's great. Um, but there's something going on here. I don't think we're updating uh, because it doesn't sound like it's uh, actually working. And what can we do to do that? We actually have to, when we update the metronome, we have to set the tempo again, right? Uh, because we only set this one down here initially, whatever it is to start with. So we want to update the time interval here. This one we want to update when we, uh, when we use the slider or we increase or decrease the tempo. So up here in update metronome, right underneath here we can go ahead we already have our instance of the metronome so metronome and then we can set the time interval we can change that real time and that is of course just going to be 60,000 again divided by bpm so let's see if that works now i'm going to start the metronome let's try and change the tempo oh that's cool All right, it works. Actually, one thing I forgot to mention is down here where we checked the count, I added this um, current time zero. So when a, when a sound actually has finished playing, it will automatically be uh, rewinded so it's ready to start again. But if it's a longer sound, um, then you have to set it. So if it's only played halfway through, then it'll play from that point on next time you play it. So this is just to rewind the sound. So we're these are really, really short samples. So they're probably going to be finished playing every single time. So probably you don't need to do this. But it's just a good thing. And now you know that, um, that that's why we do that. We set the click one current time to zero after it has played. And we do the same with click two, just so we know that it's rewinded and it's ready to play again next time. Another thing that you have maybe noticed is that when we start this one here, let's just set up the tempo. And let's just mess around with this. Oh, what happened here? Now I hit it at some random weird time where something happened, you know, now we don't get click number one, it doesn't play anymore. So um, I'm just gonna stop it again here because it's noisy. So up here, every time we add a beat, um, or subtract a beat. I just want to set the count to zero. So we know that we start from scratch every single time. So I'm going to take the count and I'm going to set it to zero. And I'm going to do the same thing right down here. Because that way, we know that every time we do this, we add a beat to the measure or subtract the beat to the measure, then we know that it's uh, going to start from scratch and we're not going to get this weird bug. So let's try that again. So when I change it to five, it will start from scratch. And six. So this is it. This is our metronome. It's finished. It's done. It maybe it got a little messy the last couple of minutes in this video or this last video. But uh, if you go back and you watch the accurate timer video, which I will link to in the description here, it will be much easier for you to understand what's actually going on here because maybe this was a little bit too fast paced, the, the third video in this series. But we have a metronome and it works and uh, you should get back to practicing using your metronome, your very own metronome. Thank you for watching and hopefully you'll come back and watch some more videos in the future. Like and subscribe, all that jazz, and see you next time. Bye-bye.